don't mess with it. It looks pretty weak, like it's been in there for a while. Yeah, the heat gets to them. Yeah. Bet you turn her out, she could run like a mother. I bet she could. What's up, girl? So that's three in the last 10 days or so, right? Hey guys, good day today, man. They're delivering hay. Good morning, guys. Hey, Sunday morning. Here we are, Heritage Farms. So, another weekend without the tractor. This is getting old, but hey, very productive weekend. So we had the 18 wheeler rolling this weekend, bringing hay and uh, brought us three loads of hay. Pretty good looking stuff, man. Pretty happy with it. Pretty good size bales and uh, I like it. So uh, we're slowly getting stocked up for uh, winter here. I think he needs to bring us three more loads, I believe, and then we'll be pretty much done. We're gonna store those down at the uh, Telephone 2 storage down there but uh what else did we do to, this weekend so yesterday we took uh, some uh older cows you know you keep replacement heifers every year and i had uh, one cow that was basically 10 years old had a couple of others that were uh, eight and a half years old and we're, the good news is we're kind of reaching a point where we can make a decision and uh we're starting to cull some of the cows that maybe have incorrect bags, you know, maybe just they're not that attractive, smaller framed, yada, yada, yada. And uh, so that's what we did yesterday. We got the old group of cows up at Telephone 2. We culled off three of those. I had a little orphan calf also that we took off. So took those to Paris yesterday to the cell barn and uh, left them over there and uh, that's about it. So that's kind of what we did. Oh, yesterday we also moved an electric fence. We're gonna try to move the group at Telephone 2 today over to uh, the rental property. The grass is just absolutely dying here, uh, which is really a shame. We need rain. It was such a mild uh, summer until uh, September hit and then the rain just totally stopped. So, but there's rain in the forecast. So uh, praying for that. A Little bit cooler temperatures doesn't help the grass that grow at night either so uh all right guys there's your update for the weekend at the farm okay well since we don't have a tractor having to use dale's tractor to feed so instead of using the trip hopper we're actually using the front bucket of the tractor filling it up with feed and then we're taking it over here and dumping it in the uh, concrete feed troughs so uh, that's what we got going. Sorry for the shadows here. It's early in the morning. I want you to look at this one little calf over here. He's the leftover. He was, uh, I guess you'd call him a surprise baby. He was like a month or two behind some of the others, but uh, pretty little heifer. So he didn't make the original cut, but uh, they're doing all right. We just need some rain, 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 man. We had such a great year until the September drought hit us. Just look at the dust storm over the cows, but you can see what he's doing here. He's coming in here and he's going to be doing a little feeding. And there you go. So here's something else we do. Since we're using the uh, tractor to feed right here, you know, uh, Dale in a former life was a truck driver and he always talked about the importance of back hauling loads, never letting your equipment go empty. So here you go. So we dumped feed. Now with the drought, the ponds are really, really low at the moment. So uh, what we're doing is we're coming in and clearing out the edges of the ponds and uh, basically uh, getting that dirt. And then we're using that dirt to fill in low spots around various places. So uh, let's see, sometimes he just uses the buckets. Other times he comes in, drops the box blade takes a good pass let's see what he does here looks to me like he's going to use the box blade this time the old box blade technique so you can see he's got his tires right next to the uh, wet part and uh, he's going to set this thing down get him a good bite of dirt he'll come up here we'll scoop it up and then we'll take it and fill in uh, somewhere where there's a major low spot 
So once again, the work on a farm is just never done, but your resources, if you really keep your eyes open, you have a ton of resources. You know, you don't have to have a lot of money. You just have to have some time and think about what you're doing and where you're going. And just like that, man, uh, you know, he's making the pond a little bit bigger, cleaning up the edges and uh, getting us a nice pile of dirt. So more to follow. Hey, Jackie, you just scared the crap out of me, girl. You ran up and jumped on me from behind like a ninja. You nearly made me have a heart attack, girl. All right, we're feeding the heifers this morning. And once again, just look at how bad and how the drought conditions are. And let me tell you, this is hard on your equipment. You're, you know, we're gonna have to blow out air filters and change air filters. It's just a dusty, dusty environment. I'm just amazed at how quickly things deteriorated over a three to four week period here. I mean, but man, the grass has just stopped growing. We're gonna have to start feeding hay like almost immediately here at the beginning of October. And that makes for a long winter when you have to do that. But all right, guys, there you go, feeding heifers. Hey guys, Scott with Heritage Farms. Hey, let me show you what we're doing. Well, here it is, it's almost the end of September. Let me tell you what, one of the challenges when you are a weekend rancher, farmer, whatever, it's hard to be here during the week at the ideal time that the pecans are starting to harvest. But look right there. That's what the pecans are looking like. So what we're doing today is we're doing just a little drive through and anything that looks like it's about to split open, we're going ahead and pulling them off. You know, when I started this little endeavor, I really thought crows, I mean, squirrels were gonna be my biggest uh, concern, but they're actually not. The biggest concern that you have is crows. The crows are just down here every day. So right now, any chance you have to get something off of the tree, that pre-husk split, look at that little cluster. So what I'm doing is I'm looking to see if it's split open at all, like that one, we're trying to come back and get them because if we don't, guess who will? That's right, the squirrels and the crows will get them. So that's what we're doing. Anything that looks like it's uh, getting ready to pop, we're going ahead and giving it a little assist and getting it on off. Like look right here, here's a great example of where one is about ready to go. We're gonna give it a little assist, take it off early. And watch how this, you can tell when a pecan is ready to be harvested, look how easy the outer husk just falls apart. And just like that, there's your pecan. Let me tell you what, these guys actually taste really good. I had a few this morning, couldn't help myself. So my wife is coming behind me. She's got the uh, extended stick and uh, we're pulling some of these off as we go along. But that's the game plan. First round of pecan harvesting at Heritage Farms 2021. And so far we've got four or five five gallon buckets. Not bad. Of course, over the next weekend, I hope we'll get more because some of these are just not quite ready yet. Some of these are about a week behind, but we'll catch them as we go along. All right, guys, more to follow. Boy, here's a great example. This little cluster has one, two, three. That one is not ready to go. Oh, look right above it. Picking these guys up. We'll get them back to the patio over at the corporate offices and look like they're boom. These guys just pop out like so easy. I mean, it's just a fine line without the assistance of a commercial tree shaker and the big operation. You kind of have to do this manually. And when you're part time, it is a challenge. So come with me on the hunt here as we look for a few more. So see, there's quite a few there, but none of these are quite ready to pop. Oop, here's one that I'm surprised hasn't fell out already. When you see the husk turn brown, 
are almost too late because odds are they're gonna fall to the ground. And unfortunately, anything that hits the ground, let me tell you what, those D-A-M-N crows are all over. But hey, they're one of God's creatures and I get it, they have to eat too. But I really thought squirrels were gonna be my enemy and they are, but nothing like the crows. The crows and the hogs are at the top of uh, the Heritage Farms hit list. And for people that didn't know, crows are a protected species and you cannot shoot them. At least in the state of Texas, you can't. Ah! <laughs> there we go. Look at that. Little guy pops open. Perfect. All right, just sharing what we're doing today.